And this is why we, want, we really do want you by next week, to e every one of you, to have written down what, th what, uh, what three major changes would you make in the process of learning in America based on Deming and Drucker, and in particular on, on today's session. The vision here that we're trying to communicate with this particular two hours is an America committed to quality and profound knowledge, so that every American, the poorest American, the richest American, the least powerful, the most powerful, somebody with a sixth grade education, somebody with a PhD, every American starts out each day and says, what process am I involved in? What system am I part of? What is my goal? What customers am I trying to satisfy? How am I doing this? Okay? In that framework, it seems to me that our strategies learning, speaking, teaching, recognizing, living, okay? How you have to learn. Then you have to speak. You have to explain what you're doing. You have to teach it. When somebody does do it right, you want to recognize them. And all this gets summarized into literally, how do you live every day? Maybe it's, maybe it may sound at first kind of, kind of hokey, but just think about it. What we're trying to do here is suggest to you that Deming took the best of the American civilization. He codified it into a way of empowering every person to have control over their contribution so that every person can literally live this out. You ought to be living it out in your marriage or your relationship to other people. You ought to be living it out in your community. You ought to be living it out in your own life. Think of your own life as a system, as a process. All that should fit together in a way that makes sense. Now, if that's true, one of the questions I'd ask you to think about, which I don't have an answer to, is what are the projects and what are the tactics that ought to grow out of this? What would, what, what would make your community more quality oriented, more like a Deming profound knowledge system? Or your family, or your job, or your volunteer activity? If you would, imagine applying quality and profound knowledge to health, safety, government, the welfare system, and learning. Notice, by the way, health, safety, and learning do not imply health care. They don't imply police. They don't imply education in the traditional sense. They simply say, OK, how do you maximize learning? How do you maximize health in America? What if we didn't need any open heart surgery because everybody had habits of diet and habits of exercise so that they didn't need it? How much would that save? Very different way of thinking than if you start, you know, what if every neighborhood had its own patrol and every neighborhood did, had, had its own people who systematically became deputized and you didn't have any crime. Which is different than, can we hire enough police and enough prosecutors and build enough prisons so that after the crime is committed, we can lock up the bad people? Very different models. And I'm trying to get you to, to break down the internal barriers to creativity where you start with blinders on and instead get you to think about all of it, the totality of opportunity that's available. Remember that we talk in terms of vision, strategies, projects, and tactics. And what I want you to think about is applying it to quality in education. And frankly, if, if I were doing this particular Chiron, I'd probably say quality in learning. I wouldn't say education. I have almost no interest in education. I have every interest in learning. Now, you may learn in a setting which is an educational setting, or you may learn some other way. But what I want to know is how much are you learning? What is your process of, of acquiring knowledge? What's your process of changing your life? And you find more and more learning goes on outside of structured bureaucratic environments. More and more people who buy tapes, or they go to a particular three-day seminar, or they do something on their own, or they pick up books, or they use expert systems on computer, or they find a consultant who comes in for a day. You know, I mean, think about it as an adult. If you had to go to learn skiing, would you take a five-hour credit course on skiing, or would you go and spend three intense days at a resort with a ski instructor? Which technology? They're both kinds of learning. Or would you read a book on how to ski, practice it a little bit, and go down the slope and see what happens? Different people do different things. My point's just, that's a, if you focus on learning, it's a dramatically more open-ended question than if you focus on education, which is a predefined professional status in a bureaucratic setting <laughs> occupied with credentials. Very different systems. Remember also that after you think you know what you're doing, we've got to go back to uh, applying listen, learn, help, and lead. But as you think now, you have your vision, you think you have your strategies, you think you have your projects, you're ready with your tactics, fine. Now go listen to the person next to you. What do they think? What are their concerns? How do they do it? 
Because if all you do is focus on your version of vision, strategies, projects, and tactics, you still have not listened to everybody else who's part of your game. So there's an enormous amount of listening involved in this kind of leading. Okay? So, how, does, uh, how would this lead you to change learning in America based on what you've learned today? What might you do? Just bring some. Uh, no, no, no rights and wrong. Just be creative. Let the students choose who they want their teachers to be, or which subjects they want to take. Okay. Put the students in a teaching capacity. And the best way to learn something is to teach them. Okay. Get the parents more involved in, in volunteering in the school. Okay. What else? Uh, like learn through experience. Okay. Should that count? Sure. And if we say to you, we want you to become something, what if you just go and do it as an apprentice and actually learn? But you didn't sit through the five-hour course. Does that count? Okay. That's okay. Well, yeah. Does that count or not? Well, your has to be defined. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I think you ought to make computers check outable at libraries just like you do books because they can learn things faster on the computer. That's interesting. Well, yeah. what, what, what if you could check out a PC and, and the software package? Literally, I mean, maybe put give a credit card or something as a, as a device. But what if public libraries became centers where people could literally go in and check out computers? In the yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think field trips should be part of uh, like for history and stuff. Um, I know when we were like in fourth grade, we toured the um, Cyclone Robin Berry College, and in high school was so much more paperwork we couldn't go anywhere. As I say, did, did you learn on field trips? Yeah. Yeah. But what what are the new rules in Georgia on field so trips? So much paperwork. You can't Anybody know? There. You do fewer field trips today. Too much litigation. We have more, too much litigation, too much time out of the classroom. The, the rules in Georgia today are actually worse for field trips than they were 30 years ago. In the bureaucracy of the test, they have the 11th grade test now that says you can't graduate from high school in Georgia. I mean, and teachers are going to have to teach. This is what's going to be on the test that ends, you know, my, teacher right. could, my English teacher couldn't teach uh, Maya Angelou's poetry because she knew that this was going to be on the test because... Right. You have to pass the test. So you then teach to the test. Yeah, remember the Deming, the, remember test, the Deming point? Right. The purpose of recognition is for what you've already internalized. And if we set up a standard for recognition, that you then, you then game the system, right? You say, I got it. What I've got to learn to do is to stand on one leg. OK, I can now stand on one leg, so I'll get an A. Who cares? Yeah, right. Now, the other answer is, the reason you're standing on one leg, and I'm not going to do this, the reason you're standing on one leg is you're a ballerina and you're doing a pirouette. <laughs> you see the difference? Okay. And we're now going to honor the best ballerina. That's a very different reason for learning to stand on one leg. And what we do in, the, in a bureaucratic credentialed environment, you systematically reduce the creativity of people and you systematically reduce the holistic manner in which they learn and you reduce them so that they become passive, narrow, and shallow. And then we say, gee, why do our schools not work? Because the entire core structure is wrong. Now, next week, we're going to pick up the third wave in American civilization. Next week's readings are Alvin and Heidi Toffler's Creating a New Civilization, The Politics of the Third Wave, Alexis de Tocqueville's Democracy in America, uh, volume 2, Books 2, Chapter 18, and Volume 2, Book 4, Chapter 1. And Don Eberly's Building a Community of Citizens, Chapter 5. And we'll take up what does the third wave mean and how it will change our lives. Okay?